So we'll take a quick look in the box. Looks all very nicely packaged. Some very nice detail. Beautiful smooth surface. The odd pin mark. Choices of props, which could come in handy. One piece cowl. Beautiful transparent parts. The decal sheet looks good, but it's starting to yellow. So the cockpit first, with all the parts given the coat of obligatory black. And a custom mix of interior green. And a custom made Tamiya panel wash. I've applied it all over the interior parts, applying it freely, and then taking up any excess. Now looking at some photographs, the back seat seemed to have a cushion. So I used some kitchen paper, cut and folded into shape, and then with some thinned down varnish applied on it, so I could form some creases. Once I was happy with this, I left it to one side to set. Now for the console decal, I had trouble here lining up the decal with some of the raised detail. Just picking out some colour. So with everything dry, I'm applying a Tamiya wash, once again made from Tamiya black and brown panel wash. This is then quickly tidied up with some white spirits. Let's piece this all together. The engine next is a bit basic, but I'll come to that later. So after applying the black, I'm going to dry brush with Mr. Metal Colors Aluminium, quite heavily as the cylinder blocks should be silver. Push rods are painted black. Now I came up with a stupid idea of adding some ignition leads to add interest by using copper wire from an old motor. So I've got 18 cylinders that require two leads per block or per cylinder. Now one of the leads goes to an outer ring and I was going to add this but by adding this it will clash with the inner cowl. So I've decided to add the second lead in the top of the cylinder head. So that's 36 holes I have to drill out altogether. I hope the drill bit holds out. So I've created nine sets of ignition leads and these will be applied to the back of the reduction gear housing, this plastic part. But first I need to work out the positions of the leads. 
So I'm using each cylinder block here to mark off the centers. The ignition leads for the rear block will be placed in between these marks. After a lot of faffing about, I've come up with a very unusual spider. Now for the rear leads, which are slightly longer, I've come up with a radioactive spider. I hope it doesn't bite me. So I'll add the reduction gearbox to the cylinders and then add the leads. Is it worth the effort? Probably not. It may have helped if I'd used a slightly thicker wire. So I can close up the fuselage now. So the undercarriage guard painted and then a Tamiya black panel wash is applied and then cleaned up in one direction with white spirits once again. The wings next. Flaps. I just want to point out the Tamiya engineering here. The wing assembly, just the front seam, is all that needs cleaning up. The other seams are or will be hidden. The nav lights. These parts will be added at the very end. The wheels and the carriage with their decals added, these will be dirtied up at the end. The wing assemblies just slide into place, not a gap anywhere. The glazed areas are masked off and painted interior green. After that, they're applied with their outside colours. So for my first coat on the P47, I've applied AK's white aluminium. I was just gonna do certain areas, but I ended up painting everything. With the aluminium dry, my first coat is a light gray. After that, a darker version of this is applied over the top. Now for the olive drab, I have quite a few custom greens already mixed. So I decided to apply these on a bit of plastic and just to see what they look like when dried and see whether I can use any of them. I ended up picking number three mixed with a small amount of these three colours, just to give me that sun faded green. And a darker version of that colour is added willy nilly but mainly around the edges. When I come to wet sand this paint surface it will blend in a lot better. Now before these two greens have time to thoroughly dry, I'm just going to scratch the surface to reveal the silver underneath. 
just for some wear and tear. Next, the rear white eye dent bands. These needed to be added with the help of the Tamiya drawings. I think the tails were 200% increase and the tail 210%, I think. This gives me the position and the width of the white bands. Add in the red on the cowl. Now for those invasion stripes. Now I had an idea, I want to test out, and I'm gonna give it a go. Now the stripes on the wings, I think are 20 inches. And thankfully, the Tamiya tape, the six millimeter tape, is near enough right. No cutting required here. Now for the fuselage bands, I think they're 18 inches. So it's said. So the six millimeter tape, I just need to trim a little. So I've got my bands, my end bands, just making sure. One, two, three, four, five. End bands. One, two, three, four, five. Bingo. So I'm going to take the tape off for the white areas first. And then I'm going to apply a very thin down coat of Tamiya White applied by a brush. I want to try and get that effect of brush strokes on the wing, on these stripes. Then a very thin coat of white is sprayed over the top, just to blend in those brush strokes, but not to obliterate them. I still want them to show through. Now the white's dry, I'm gonna apply the black. Once again, I've got a couple of custom mixed blacks, so I'll just pick one, and once again, I'll apply these by brush. But black's going to be a lot more easy to apply. So all I need here is two light coats of black applied by brush. While I've got the black out, I'm going to apply the evasion stripes on the top wing, but just with one very light coat. The aim here is that when I apply the darker green on top, hopefully these will show through slightly. Here I'm covering those white rear bands with a green. Slightly faded, but something that will stand out from the background green on the rear. While I've applied the white bands, we're well, looking at the photograph, some of the white does show through. A bit of wear and tear. And then for the evasion stripes on the top of the fuselage, although they're not there, and the ones on the wing, I'm going to apply a darker green. It looks quite fresh, looking at the photograph. So everything's been demasked, and while the paint is still fresh, I'll scratch some areas off using a toothpick to reveal the silver underneath again. So the paint has been left for a few days to harden, ready for a light wet sanding using a very, very well-worn sanding sponge. Why do I do this? The sanding process helps me in two ways, to limit silvering on the decals and to help me weather the surface. Now for the part of modelling I hate, always have and always will, and that's adding the decals. Now I haven't said much about the new decal sheet I ordered, but here goes. 
The film on the decal looked like it was yellowing. So I placed it in the window just to get a few weeks of winter sun. Although going on a dark background or a dark colour scheme, I should have been all right. But other than that, they look really good. But I had noticed the date on the info sheet said 1997. So having never used these decals before, I decided just to test one. That I didn't mind messing up. Oh dear, that doesn't bode well, does it? I'm just going to go away and scratch my head and see what I can do. Right, I'm sorry I didn't record the application of these decals, but I had one chance to get these right. If I got these wrong, I'd be in trouble. But now they went down reasonably well, I'll show you the process that I used that worked for me. So while I'm here, I just want to show you the difference in size of the insignia. Never mind the colour. So the decal application, I don't want to waste these decals because I may want to use them again at some point. So I'm going to use the Tamiya ones. It's a process I want to show you, not the decal. So an application of liquid decal film was applied with a brush. Now you can apply this roughly or carefully around the decal. Choice is yours. And although it looks rough, when it dries it looks level and beautiful. After 15 minutes, I left it a bit longer just to be safe, the decal is cut to shape around the existing film. I'll show you what happens if you don't do this. So both pieces have been dipped in warm water. I'm using Tamiya's Mark Fit on the surface first for both pieces. Now I don't know if you can see here, but you can just see the excess extra decal film that I applied by brush. It's quite easily removed by brush. Now the second piece, this is the one I've trimmed, is cleaner to apply. Then the excess mark fit is squeezed out and then not long after that I've applied some microsol and then it's applied and left to do its stuff. So that's how the Superscale International decals were applied. Thankfully it all worked. With any residue washed off, everything is sealed with a satin varnish. And then a panel wash is added. With all that finished, a couple of coats of light matte varnish is applied. Just going to apply a few exhaust stains using a tiny amount of oil and then blend it in with a dry brush. Once again, on a kit of this scale, I don't want to go overboard. So I just need to add all these pieces and get this kit finished off. So I've just got the pitot tube and the aerial on top to add.
So I've got these figures to hand and I thought I'd have a go at building them up and painting them. Detail's not bad, although they do need a lot of cleanup. Now I'm not the best at painting figures, but I do think they do add something to a model. Uh, one thing I noticed with one of the paint guides on these figures that it says the right hand should be flesh coloured but it actually has a glove moulding on the hand. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy the final photographs. I want to thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.